Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals, which is the hour for revival. I'm your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and it's always the hour for revival. Glory, hallelujah, Father. Hide me behind the cross. There'll be none of me but all of you. Speak through these lips of clay, and everybody leave here singing, I got just what I wanted, and more from the Lord, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Chloe, God bless you. Glad you could tune in to this video. This is a powerful video, and I hope you love it in the name of Jesus. Pastor Mike, God bless you, brother. I love you. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. I'm going to entitle the message tonight, how to face your future. If you got your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Jeremiah. That's where we're going to start out tonight, the book of Jeremiah. The first chapter, verse 9. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Have not I command... Oh, that's Joshua. Wait a minute. <laughs> that's the wrong one, Joshua. Jeremiah... Chapter 1, verse 8. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Actually, let's go to verse 7 first. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. On that day, God assigned him a position as a prophet of God. On that day, he received the call at a very young age, at a young childhood, God called to his young prophet, Jeremiah. Now, it's interesting. Samuel said the same thing, Lord, how am I going to do this? I'm a young youth. I'm, a, I'm just a child. And, and Jeremiah said, Lord, how am I going to do this? I'm just a child. And, and they, they inquired of God and said, Lord, I know you're saying you've got a call on my life, but how can these things be? You know, it's amazing that God told Jeremiah, he said, you will be a prophet to the nations of the world, but yet he was just a prophet in Jerusalem and then a prophet in Egypt. How do you go from being a prophet in Jerusalem and a prophet in Egypt to being a prophet to the nations of the world? I want you to understand at least over a thousand years after Jeremiah passed into glory, his writings were found and they were brought and put into a book called the Bible thousands and thousands of years later, about 2,000 or almost 2,000 years later. They put the books of Jeremiah together in the Bible. And now, hear me out. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, his book is around the world. Now he is a prophet in every nation that has a Bible. Now Jeremiah's prophetic word from God as a young child is fulfilled. When God told the prophet Jeremiah, you will be a prophet to the nations of the world. He didn't say in that generation or even in that lifetime, or that century. He just said, you will be a prophet to the nations. Are you hearing me? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. If God called you to it, he'll see you through it. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I don't care 
what kind of comp, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sorry for the C. I don't care what kind of competition, there you go, Lord, comes against you. If God said it, it's going to be for your life. Chloe, be encouraged in the name of Jesus. God's got a call on your life. And he's going to do great things in your life for his glory, says the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. But God told young Jeremiah, he said, don't be afraid. He said, and don't be afraid of their faces. A lot of people look up at people in the pulpit and they, they freeze like a deer in headlights. You should see me driving at night. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. The, the uh, deers, like, you know, I mean, I, I'll get this deer in the headlight kind of stare going on at night when lights are coming from other cars. I like. <laughs> my eyes will follow off the road a little bit. And I, I know that God's going to help me with that in Jesus' name. Amen. But I'm just using that as a funny example right there. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. But God called Jeremiah to do a work. And he did it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Like I said, I've entitled this message, How to Face Your Future. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. A lot of times God will send us out to face off with the future hellhounds, to face off with the hecklers of hell. God knows our heart will sometimes get weary. That's why he said several times, don't be weary. Don't be afraid. Every time it seemed like God would send an angel to somebody, he'd say, fear not, for I am with you. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Timothy, God bless you, little brother. Amen. Glad to see you tuned in today. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. See, God knows our heart will sometimes get weary. But he said, don't be afraid of their faces. He even said in Jeremiah, have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now it's time to read Jeremiah. Hallelujah. I mean, uh, Joshua. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He told Joshua, he said, Have I not commanded thee, Joshua 1 and 9, Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. He even said in his word, even in the new covenant, old covenant, he said, wherever you go, I'm going to be with you. And the promise of the old covenant is the promise in the new covenant. He said, wherever you go, I will be with you always, even until the end. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Jesus, God in flesh, was not abandoned at Golgotha's hill. If God did not abandon his son, he will not abandon you either. God the Father was there for Jesus, and God the Father is there for you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The Bible said that he is the Father to the fatherless. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Some of you might not know your daddy tonight, but I know that your Father in heaven knows you. And he loves each and every one of you watching. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You might not have known the love of a father, but God says you are fearfully, beautifully, wonderfully, you are fearfully and wonderfully made of God. Made personally in his image. You are beautiful. You're a beautiful creation and he loves you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. 
perfectly formed and fashioned by the very hand of God from your mama's womb. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. I hope somebody's getting loved on by Jesus tonight, getting blessed by this message. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. I just want to deal with a few more issues in this message. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We are not to rehearse what we are going to say. When he speaks, he will speak through us. Luke 12 and 12. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He said, take no thought of what you're going to say. For in that very hour, the Holy Spirit will speak through you. He'll stand by you when all the hecklers of the hellhounds of hell are standing there heckling at your life and, and judging you and condemning you. Jesus promises that the Holy Spirit of God will be there. He said, don't, don't take no thought about what you're going to say. For at that very hour, at that very moment, God's Holy Spirit will speak through you. He's called the Klutos, Parakletos, the defense attorney, the one who defends us, the one who takes our case. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I love the old post that I've seen several times on Facebook. It says, when the devil brings up your past, tell him Jesus dropped the charges. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Jesus is fighting for you and me right now. The Bible said he daily lives to make intercession for you and for me. He, he daily lives to make intercession for us. Who better to pray for us than Jesus? Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. Who better to pray for us than Jesus? Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. The same thing happened at the trial of Stephen. Acts 6 and 15. The Bible said, now before Stephen was put to death, a lot of them knew he was innocent because of what they saw. The Bible said as he was beginning to speak to them and testify. You see, there's a power in your testimony. As Pastor Matt said Sunday, there's a story in your scars. There's a message in your scars. But let me explain this to you. The Bible said that we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony, Jesus said, If you're ashamed to acknowledge me before man, I'll be ashamed to acknowledge you before my Father and the holy angels in heaven. We've got to testify that on our behalf he cried to telesty. It is finished from the cross. He cried, it is finished for you and me. And he said, for, for, our, for, for us to go free from our sins, to go free and live our life free from the worries of who we used to be, that we could follow him into eternity all the way into heaven. From here to eternity, we could have a new life. But you cannot have a new life without Jesus Christ. It's time to make a decision. It's not about a religion. It's not about a religious experience. Oh, I can feel a warm, fuzzy feeling. It ain't about that. It's about living and loving the one that died for you. It's about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Some people say, well, Brother HR, I don't know if I feel saved anymore. I didn't ask you how you felt. I didn't ask you if you felt saved. The Bible said the spirit within us bears witness that we are the sons and daughters of God. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Brother Adam, God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. The Bible said we walk by faith and not by sight. There's sometimes we'll have a situation where we can't feel God. But let me tell you something. Let me explain something to you. The teacher is always silent. 
during the test. The teacher won't always let you know that they are present. Even though you know they're present, they won't make a sound. They'll, they, you'll, you'll see the movement of God around you, but you'll feel like, God, where are you at right now? I need you, Lord. Lord saying, I'm right here, baby. I'm not left you. I'm, I'm not forsaking you. I'm right here. You're going to make it through this. This test too shall be passed in the name of Jesus. You're going to be all right. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But the Bible said that Stephen's face shone like an angel. His face literally become illuminated in the glory of God as he was testifying about the goodness of Jesus and about the calling that God had put on his life and about what he was there for. He was on trial for the name of Jesus' sake. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. He said, Blessed are you when people will persecute you and talk all manners of evil about you for my name's sake. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. The glory of God, when you truly get in the glory of God, it does what happened for Acts 6, 15 for Stephen. Exodus 34, 29 through 34 for Moses. His face began to shine and began to be illuminated. Y'all know about that one video where I preached and God literally illuminated my face. And you'd actually see the bones of my facial skeleton as the glory of God came on it. And that To God be the glory. I'm not taking any glory away from him. What I'm telling you is it's a testimony that God is with me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. That's why I get so excited when not only am I getting talked about, but, you know, also when I I see what God's doing, you know, like when I'm preaching, a fire will show up in the picture, you know, or or whatever. There, There's a, an evident sign to everybody around me that God is there. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord. They said that when Catherine Kuhlman went home to be with Jesus, did you know that over her dead body, that a light full of glory, the Shekinah glory came in that room, and the power and presence of God, they said, at that hospital, hovered over the body of Catherine Kuhlman. The Spirit of the Lord had come for Catherine Cohen. He had come to take her home, come to call her away to glory. Her work was finished. Actually, she could have kept going, but she was weary. The doctors even said she didn't need to die at that moment. But she told the Lord she wanted to come on home. She asked him to take her home because there was so much strife and stress in her life going on she said lord i'm just i'm ready to rest i i want to go home 69 years old or 68 laid down on that hospital bed they cut her open and by the time they got to her heart her heart had stopped and the light of god's glory filled that room and hovered over her body and called her home. Are you hearing me? Thank you, Jesus. Until God's ready for you to go, you're not going to go. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But if God's ready for you, I don't care how many doctors are around. I don't care how smart they are. I don't care anything about all that other stuff. When... Uh, God, when God's ready for you to go, you gonna go, baby. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. When your roll is caught up yonder, will you gonna be there? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You gotta make your election sure. That's what the Bible says. Make your election sure. Know where you're standing with God. 
and stay in your calling, of course. Don't get out of your calling. But if you know that God's got a call on your life, stay faithful to that call. Testify. Because the Bible says we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So the glory of God will change you. God will speak through you. His glory will change you. And he'll do it all for his glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Amen. And because he was looking at God, everyone started looking at him. Stephen fixated his eyes on the Lord. And he said, I see the Lord high and lifted up. He said, I can see him sitting or standing. He said, I, I can see him standing at the Father's right hand. When he said that, they went nuts. These people said, look, his face is like that of an angel. He's telling the truth. When he said, I can see the resurrected Christ standing at the Father's right hand, the Bible said that they began to bite at him. They began to bite him. They began to claw and to slap Stephen. They began to torment him and drug him out into the city and threw him into the the rock pit, but I love what the Bible says about it. The Bible says that Stephen looked steadfast to heaven. This whole time, he didn't even feel the bite. Let's go back and read it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. But the Bible says that as he was being bitten and slapped and tortured physically and being led to the slaughter, basically. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. All for Jesus' name's sake. Amen. Praise the Lord. Stephen prayed, the Bible said. He got on his knees and looked up to heaven and he said, Father, hold not this sin to their charge. He said, Lord, I, I see the demon behind them. I, I see that this ain't flesh and blood I'm answering about. This is not them it's the demon spirit behind them. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. And he said, Father, hold not this sin to their charge. Who does that sound like to you? That sounds like the master, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The Bible said that Jesus said from the cross, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing to me. They don't know that not only is it fulfilling Bible prophecy, but they was also being used by demonic influences within the crowd. When it talks in Psalms 22 about the crucifixion, of Jesus Christ, it mentions the bulls of Bashan were there at Golgotha's hill. Now, there was no bulls mentioned from Bashan in the New Testament at the crucifixion. Where Psalms 22 get, where does Psalms 22 get the bulls of Bashan? It's translated in the original language as the demons the spirits of Bashan. Why was the demons of Bashan there at the cross of Golgotha? Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to show you something. Because Goliath was from the land of Gath. And the Bible said that David cut off the head of the giant with the giant's own sword and buried it outside Jerusalem. And he named the hill Golgotha. Because Goliath was from the land of Gath. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. So when the blood of Jesus... Now remember, giants were of the seed of satanic... Uh, of satanic influence. They were a part of the fallen angels. Giants were. They were descendants from these angelic creatures that fell from God's grace. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And uh, these demon powers 
was there at the cross egging people on to mock Jesus. And then one thief cried out from the cross. Now Jesus continued on the cross loving them and fulfilling Bible prophecy the whole time. Every word out of his mouth was a fulfillment of the Father's word. It was a fulfillment of Old Testament prophets and what they said would take place concerning Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. But not only that, I want you to know this. That as prophecy was being fulfilled he was loving them and forgiving them though their sins were putting him upon Golgotha's hill Jesus was loving them he was holding them together with his love it wasn't nails that held Jesus up there it was his love for you and for me that held him up at Golgotha's hill amen thank you Lord Jesus Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, a lot of people will look at you and me and judge us based on what they see about us. First Samuel one thirteen. Samuel's mother, who was at that time not a mother, she was just praying to become a mother and wanted to become a mother, and the prophet of God thought she was drunk. And said, why are you drinking in the house of God? And judging her based upon her facial appearance. And the fact that she had prayed so loudly that she lost her voice. There was no words coming out of her mouth. But God heard the words of her heart that her mouth could not utter. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. But man looked at the flesh and said, well, they're in sin. And then it goes on to show us that God granted the request. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. Do you know hypocrites while fasting will make their face to look bad? They will make it look like, oh, I'm so hungry. Oh, I, I, I'm just so looking for a meal because I'm fasting for my God. I'm trying to look so good for for God's glory and I'm fasting. And the, the Bible said, don't do that. Jesus said, do not do that. He said, wash your face. Make yourselves look presentable. Don't even let people know you've been fasting. Because it's not for your glory, it's for God's glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That's Matthew 6, 16, by the way. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He done said he was going to send us out like sheep among wolves. Matthew 10, 16. But he promised if we listen It, but he promised if they listen or not that when it came our time to go that they would know that a prophet had surely walked among them. Ezekiel 2 and 5. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. Our job is to go and speak. It's, job, it's God's job to convince. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Moses was just told, and Noah was just told to build the ark and to preach and let them know to come into the ark. All Noah was supposed to do was speak to them. To testify about what God had told him was going to happen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Our job is not to... Our job is to go and speak. It's God's job to do the convincing. Amen. 
Thank you, Holy Ghost. Mark 16 and 20. The Bible said the Lord, that they went everywhere. The Lord working through them, confirming his word with signs following. If you go out and speak for him on God's behalf, for you are a representative a representative of God. That's what the Bible says. We are his ambassadors as if God were making his appeal through us. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. So I hope this has answered the questions that some have had on their heart. God bless you, Sister Mary. Glad you could tune in. Love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. But what I'm saying today is if God's called you to do something, don't run from the calling that God has put on your life. For many are called and few are chosen. But it's up to you to answer the call from the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Remember what he said in Jeremiah. They have, I have called, but they have not answered. It's your job to answer the call. It's God's job to call. It's your job to answer and do what God's calling you to do despite the criticism. And you will be blessed for it if you answer the call that God has on your life. Despite it, come hell or high water, if you say yes to Jesus, he'll do a miracle in your life and he'll make you into a walking miracle. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. If you're watching this video, pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I come to you a sinner. I believe you died on the cross, that God the Father raised you from the dead, and I am saved in the name of Jesus. Wash me, Father, and cleanse me. Make me one of yours. Fill me with your spirit that I might make heaven my home. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. I pray for healing. I pray for deliverance for everybody watching in the name of Jesus. Father, fill everybody watching with the Holy Ghost and fire in the name of Jesus. For Jesus, you are the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and fire. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Before this battery dies, I want to let you know I love you. God bless you all. If you're uh, watching me on YouTube, please like, subscribe, and share the video. Hit the bell notification so you can get more videos like this. I love you. God bless you. I'll see you in the next meeting or in the air in heaven. Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals. But it's always the hour for revival. I'm your brother in the Lord. Brother HR, amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And it's always the hour for revival. Write to me. Let me know what God's done for you. Uh, hour for revival at yahoo.com. God bless you. I'll send you a certificate of sonship. If you'd like to support this ministry, you can do so by going to Cash App and going to Cash Tag Hour for Revival. God bless you. Your love gives large or small. Keep helping us bring the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ around the world, not just here, but abroad as well. I love you. God bless. Bye-bye.